Sometimes it's a giant robot kaiju unleashed by aliens to subdue the Earth, and in other instances it's a human-created anti-Godzilla mech created to take down the King of the Monsters. Who is it? If you guessed Mechagodzilla, you're dead wrong. Sort of. But don't worry, by the time the Toku Professor is through with this lecture, the answer will no longer be a mystery <laughs> Uh Let's cover the history of Mogira together. Making his movie debut in 1957, Mogira is one of the eldest of all the Godzilla kaiju, with his first appearance occurring even before series staples like Mothra and King Ghidorah. Only Godzilla, Angiris, Rodan, and Meganulon, and King Kong, if you count him as a Godzilla kaiju, are older than this robot. However, it wouldn't be until 1994 that Mogira would be officially integrated into the Godzilla franchise, in the film Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, in which the battle robot was given a brand new, modern design. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go back in time to shortly after the successful release of the original Godzilla film, where the saga of Mogira truly begins. Gojira's success quickly led to other Japanese movie studios producing science fiction creature features, several of which involved alien invasions. Having been mimicked, Toho decided to copy these studios right back and release their own alien movie, which would become The Mysterians. At first, this expensive film was not planned to have any giant monsters or any bizarre alien plots to intermarry with Earthlings, for that matter, but the co-creator of Godzilla, Tomoyuki Tanaka, insisted a kaiju be added in one out. Initially, the new monster was conceived of as being a completely living, giant mole-like being with some traits similar to reptiles. This is the origin of the name Mogira, which is very similar to the Japanese word for mole, Mogura. The kaiju would eventually be reworked into a robot because director Ishiro Honda wanted to emphasize the technological prowess of the Mysterians and to distinguish the monster from Toho's previous creatures. Some aspects of the original design remained, though, such as the buzzsaw on the back and, of course, the drill-shaped nose for burrowing through the ground. The original Mogira suit was designed based on this reference model and was composed of three parts, the head, upper body, and lower body. Since the suit was built in three pieces, for close-up scenes where Mogira was kicking objects around, the suit actor only needed to wear the lower half of the suit. Huh, those are some nice pants there. Where can I get a pair? <laughs> anyway, I think we've covered enough non-fiction for the moment. Let's get into Mogira's role in The Mysterians. In the movie, Mogira was a war machine created by the Mysterians and controlled by radio waves, who emerged from a hillside prior to the aliens revealing themselves to mankind. Mogira destroyed a village and its shrine, and stomped unchecked through a town after taking out a power plant. Nothing the military could throw at the robot had any effect, until the army rigged a large bridge to explode and detonated the explosives just as the kaiju stepped onto the structure. Mogira toppled down into the abyss and was destroyed. Scientists later analyzed the materials Mogira was constructed from and found it to be composed of metal, not from Earth. And that was Mogira's main contribution to the Mysterians. We now turn to... Hey, Professor, I have a question! Who said that? Please don't interrupt unless I ca... Oh, no. It's Kishimokun. Things always go south when he starts asking questions. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, yes, Kishimokun, what is it? You forgot about Mogira number two, Shiro and you! Mogira number two? I, I was just getting to. There was a second Mogira in the Mysterians! You had us read about it, remember? Aliens released it near the end of the movie, and a few seconds later, the Uh, yes, that's right. Toho had wanted to use a small, self-propelled model of Mogira for that scene, but in the end had to switch to a puppet. I, I appreciate you bringing that up, Kishimukun, but I was... Hey! Hey, hey, what are you doing? I know more Mogira stuff than you, so for the rest of the day, I'm the Toku Professor! <sighs> and Kishimukun raids again. Okay, fine, you can wear the hat and stand up here, youngster, but I'm still leading this class, got it? Ugh. Anyway, uh, after the Mysterians, Mogira vanished for many years, only making minor appearances in cartoons, video games, and the like. The kaiju didn't even show up and destroy all monsters. But then, much later, near to the end of Godzilla's Heisei series, Koichi Kawakita, 
The special effects director for the sixth entry in the series, who loved the Mysterians, pushed to bring the robot back. Mogira was included in an ambitious draft for the film, then called Godzilla vs. Astro Godzilla. But when Toho's film Orochi the Eight-Headed Dragon performed poorly at the Japanese box office, Toho decided to reduce the scale of their next Godzilla movie, and in the next draft, Mechagodzilla, who had just appeared in the last Godzilla movie and had a suit already, replaced Mogira. Uh, poor Mogira. Shh. But Kawakita didn't give up, and in the end, he finally won out, and Mogira made an appearance in Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla in 1994 becoming the first and only monster that wasn't part of Toho's Big Five to reappear in the Heisei series. Various designs were toyed with, but eventually the Heisei Mogira design we all know and love was chosen. This version of Mogira could separate into vehicles, much like Mechagodzilla could in a draft for the preceding movie. Please don't interrupt! Like the original Mogira costume, the Heisei suit had a top half and a bottom half, and stood about 6 feet 6 inches tall. A small model was built for the scenes where Mogira transformed or was in flight. Now let's get back into Mogira's in-universe history. Mogira was constructed by the Japanese military to take down Godzilla, but ends up first getting launched into space to do battle with Space Godzilla. Mogira was repulsed and knocked back to Earth, and had to be repaired. After being fixed, the robot was sent out again to battle Space Godzilla a second time, but one of Mogira's pilots that hated Godzilla led Mogira to attack the King of the Monsters instead. When the other two pilots regained control of the mech, Mogira was set back on course and attacked Space Godzilla, again without success. Godzilla joined the fight, and with Mogira's assistance, was able to destroy the tower that was providing power to Space Godzilla. And then Mogira destroyed Space Godzilla's shoulder crystals with its spiral grenade missiles. But Space Godzilla retaliated and ended up wrecking Mogira. When Godzilla dealt the invading monster the finishing blow, Mogira went up in flames alongside the evil creature. And thus ended the tale of Mogira. Mostly. Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla is his latest movie up to now, except for a cameo in Godzilla Final Wars, but this second appearance of Mogira led to the robot making numerous appearances in other media since then, such as in the show Godzilla Island, where both versions of Mogira appeared, in comics, in many more video games, etc. Most recently, its original form could briefly be seen in Godzilla Singular Point. And I certainly can't fail to mention that Bandai has produced numerous figures of Mogira since 1994. Lastly, the robot has been referenced outside of his own franchise on several occasions, such as in the Justarizers. One of Sevenger's forms from the Ultraman series appears to be based on Mogira as well. Uh, uh, Kishimu-kun, what are you doing? I'm borrowing like Mogira! Now there's a gaping hole in the middle of the classroom! Could you please just stop, little buddy? Uh, anyway, I thank you other good students for your attention. Please like and subscribe and all that other stuff because this is going to cost a lot of money to fix. And go back and watch my video on 46 Super Sentai Facts You Never Knew. See you next- <coughs> What? What happened? I think a microwave cannon fell on my head. <laughs> hmm. Epic fail.